Sung Mei Ling or Sung Mei Ling Chinese, Song Mei Ling Pinyin, Song Mei Ling, March 5, 1898 to October 23, 2003, also known as Madame Chang Kai-shek or Madame Chang, was a Chinese political figure who was First Lady of the Republic of China, the wife of Generalissimo and President Chiang Kai-shek. Sung played a prominent role in the politics of the Republic of China and was the sister-in-law of Sun Yat-sen, the founder and the leader of the Republic of China. She was active in the civic life of her country and held many honorary and active positions, including chairman of Fu Zhen Catholic University. During the Second Sino-Japanese War she rallied her people against the Japanese invasion and in 1943 conducted an eight-month speaking tour of the United States of America to gain support. She was also the youngest and the last surviving of the three Sung sisters, and one of only two first ladies during World War II along with Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, 1900-2002 who lived into the 21st century. Her life traversed three centuries. <laughs> Early life She was born in Hongkou District, Shanghai, on March 5, 1898, though some biographies give the year as 1897, since Chinese tradition considers one to be a year old at birth. She was the fourth of six children of Charlie Sung, a wealthy businessman and former Methodist missionary from Hainan, and his wife Ni Kui Seng, Ni Gui Zhen Ni Gui Jun. Mei Ling's siblings were Sister Ai Ling, Sister Ching Ling, who later became Madame Sun Yat-sen, older brother Ze Ven and younger brothers Ze Liang TL and Ze An Ta. Topic: Education. In Shanghai, Mei Ling attended the McTyre School for Girls with her sister Ching Ling. Their father, who had studied in the United States, arranged to have them continue their education in the U.S. in 1907. Mei Ling and Ching Ling attended a private school in Summit, New Jersey. In 1908, Ching Ling was accepted by her sister I Ling's alma mater, Wesleyan College, at age 15 and both sisters moved to Macon, Georgia, to join I Ling. However, she could not get permission to stay on campus as a family member nor could she be a student because she was too young. Mei Ling spent the year in Demarest, Georgia, with Ai Ling's Wesleyan friend, Blanche Moss, who enrolled Mei Ling as an eighth grader at Piedmont College. In 1909, Wesleyan's newly appointed president, William Newman Ainsworth, gave her permission to stay at Wesleyan and assigned her tutors. She briefly attended Fairmount College in Monteagle, Tennessee in 1910. Mei Ling was officially registered as a freshman at Wesleyan in 1912 at the age of 15. She then transferred to Wellesley College two years later to be closer to her older brother, T.V., who, at the time, was studying at Harvard. By then, both her sisters had graduated and returned to Shanghai. She graduated from Wellesley as one of the 33 Durant Scholars on June 19, 1917, with a major in English literature and minor in philosophy. She was also a member of Tau Zeta Epsilon, Wellesley's Arts and Music Society. As a result of being educated in English all her life, she spoke excellent English, with a pronounced Georgia accent which helped her connect with American audiences. <laughs> Madam Chang Sung Mei Ling met Chiang Kai-shek in 1920. Since he was 11 years her elder, already married, and a Buddhist, Mei Ling's mother vehemently opposed the marriage between the two, but finally agreed after Chang showed proof of his divorce and promised to convert to Christianity. Chang told his future mother-in-law that he could not convert immediately, because religion needed to be gradually absorbed, not swallowed like a pill. They married in Shanghai on December 1, 1927. While biographers regard the marriage with varying appraisals of partnership, love, politics and competition, it lasted 48 years. The couple had no children. In 1928, she was made a member of the Committee of Yuan's by Chang. They renewed their wedding vows on May 24, 1944 at St. Bartholomew's Church in New York City. Polly Smith sang the Lord's Prayer at the ceremony. Madame Chang initiated the New Life Movement and became actively engaged in Chinese politics. She was a member of the Legislative Yuan from 1930 to 1932 and Secretary General of the Chinese Aeronautical Affairs Commission from 1936 to 1938. In 1945 she became a member of the Central Executive Committee of the Kuomintang. 
As her husband rose to become Generalissimo and leader of the Kuomintang, Madame Chang acted as his English translator, secretary and advisor. She was his muse, his eyes, his ears, and his most loyal champion. During World War II, Madame Chang tried to promote the Chinese cause and build a legacy for her husband on a par with Roosevelt, Churchill and Stalin. Well versed in both Chinese and Western culture, she became popular both in China and abroad. Her prominence led Joseph Stilwell to quip that she ought to be appointed Minister of Defense. In 1931, Sung Mei Ling had a villa built for her on the east side of Nanjing. Located a few hundred meters east of the Sifangcheng Pavilion of the Mingxiaoling Mausoleum, the villa still exists, and is commonly known as Meilinggong Meiling, Meiling Palace. Warfans Although Sung Mei Ling initially avoided the public eye after marrying Chang, she soon began an ambitious social welfare project to establish schools for the orphans of Chinese soldiers. The orphanages were well appointed, with playgrounds, hotels, swimming pools, a gymnasium, model classrooms, and dormitories. Sung Mei Ling was deeply involved in the project and even picked all of the teachers herself. There were two schools, one for boys and one for girls, built on a thousand-acre site at the foot of Purple Mountain, in Nanjing. She referred to these children as her warfans and made them a personal cause. The fate of the children of fallen soldiers became a much more important issue in China after the beginning of the war with Japan in 1937. In order to better provide for these children she established the Chinese Women's National War Relief Society. Topic. Visits to the U.S. Sung Mei Ling made several tours to the United States to lobby support for the nationalists' war effort. She drew crowds as large as 30,000 people and in 1943 made the cover of Time magazine for a third time. She had earlier appeared on the October 26, 1931 cover alongside her husband and on the January 3, 1937 cover with her husband as Man and Wife of the Year. Both husband and wife were on good terms with Time magazine's senior editor and co-founder Henry Luce, who frequently tried to rally money and support from the American public for the Republic of China. On February 18, 1943, she became the first Chinese national and the second woman to address both houses of the U.S. Congress. After the defeat of her husband's government in the Chinese Civil War in 1949, Madame Chang followed her husband to Taiwan, while her sister Sung Ching Ling stayed in mainland China, siding with the communists. Madame Chang continued to play a prominent international role. She was a patron of the International Red Cross Committee, honorary chair of the British United Aid to China Fund, and first honorary member of the Bill of Rights Commemorative Society. Later life After the death of her husband in 1975, Madame Chang assumed a low profile. She was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1975 and would undergo two mastectomies in Taiwan. She also had an ovarian tumor removed in 1991. Chiang Kai shek was succeeded to power by his eldest son Chang Ching Kuo, from a previous marriage, with whom Madame Chang had rocky relations. In 1975, she emigrated from Taiwan to her family's 36-acre estate in Laddingtown, New York, where she kept a portrait of her late husband in full military regalia in her living room. She kept a residence in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, where she vacationed in the summer. Madame Chang returned to Taiwan upon Chang Ching Kuo's death in 1988, to shore up support among her old allies. However, Chang Ching Kuo's successor, Li Teng Wei, proved more adept at politics than she was, and consolidated his position. She again returned to the U.S. and made a rare public appearance in 1995 when she attended a reception held on Capitol Hill in her honor in connection with celebrations of the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. Madame Chang made her last visit to Taiwan in 1995. In the 2000 presidential election on Taiwan, the Kuomintang produced a letter from her in which she purportedly supported the KMT candidate Lin Chan over independent candidate James Sung no relation. James Sung never disputed the authenticity of the letter. Sung sold her Long Island estate in 2000 and spent the rest of her life in a Gracie Square apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan owned by her niece. An open house viewing of the estate drew many Taiwanese expatriates. 
When Madame Chang was 103 years old, she had an exhibition of her Chinese paintings in New York. Death Madame Chang died in her sleep in New York City, in her Manhattan apartment on October 23, 2003, at the age of 105. Her remains were interred at Ferncliff Cemetery in Hartsdale, New York, pending an eventual burial with her late husband who was entombed in CIHU, Taiwan. The stated intention is to have them both buried in mainland China once political differences are resolved. Upon her death, the White House released a statement. Madam Chang was a close friend of the United States throughout her life, and especially during the defining struggles of the last century. Generations of Americans will always remember and respect her intelligence and strength of character. On behalf of the American people, I extend condolences to Madam Chiang's family members and many admirers around the world. Topic. Appraisals by international press The New York Times obituary wrote, As a fluent English speaker, as a Christian, as a model of what many Americans hoped China to become, Madame Chang struck a chord with American audiences as she traveled across the country, starting in the 1930s, raising money and lobbying for support of her husband's government. She seemed to many Americans to be the very symbol of the modern, educated, pro-American China they yearned to see emerge, even as many Chinese dismissed her as a corrupt, power-hungry symbol of the past they wanted to escape. Life magazine called Madame the most powerful woman in the world. Liberty magazine described her as the real brains and boss of the Chinese government. Claire Booth Luce compared her to Joan of Arc and Florence Nightingale. Ernest Hemingway called her the Empress of China. Topic Gallery. Topic Internet Video. 1937 video cast of Sung Mei Ling Address to the World in English on YouTube. In Chinese, Sung Mei Ling and the China Air Force. 1995, U.S. Senators held a reception for Sung Mei Ling in recognition of China's role as a U.S. ally in World War II. Topic see also Second Sino-Japanese War Xi'an Incident History of the Republic of China Military of the Republic of China President of the Republic of China Politics of the Republic of China Claire Li Chenault Flying Tigers Chang Fang Liang National Revolutionary Army Sino-German Cooperation 1911-1941 Address to Congress, the full text of her 1943 address The Last Empress, Madame Chiang Kai-shek and the Birth of Modern China, a 2009 biography of Sung May Ling Topic References Topic Bibliography Chu, Samuel C. Kennedy, Thomas L., eds. 2005. Madame Chang Kai-shek and Her China. Norwalk, Connecticut, Eastbridge. ISBN 9781891936789. DeLong, Thomas A. 2007. Madame Chang Kai-shek and Miss Emma Mills, China's First Lady and Her American Friend. Jefferson, North Carolina, McFarland & Company, Inc. ISBN 978-0-7864-2980-6. Preview at Google Books Donovan, Sandy 2006. Madam Chiang Kai-shek, Face of Modern China. Minneapolis, Compass Point Books. ISBN 978-0-7565-1886-8. Preview at Google Books Pakula, Hannah 2009. The Last Empress, Madame Chiang Kai-shek and the Birth of Modern China. New York, Simon & Schuster. ISBN 978-1-4391-4893-8. Preview at Google Books Scott Wong, Kevin 2005. Americans First, Chinese Americans and the Second World War. Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674016712. Retrieved May 20, 2015. Taylor, J. 2009. The Generalissimo, Chiang Kai-shek and the Struggle for Modern China. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. pp. 217-18. ISBN 978-0-674-03338-2. Retrieved May 20, 2015. Preview at Google Books Tyson Lee, Laura 2006. 
Madam Chiang Kai-shek, China's Eternal First Lady. New York, Grove Press. ISBN 978-0-8021-4322-8. Preview at Google Books Topic External links Audio of her speaking at the Hollywood Bowl, 1943 3 hours into program Text of her address to the U.S. Congress, 1943 as delivered text transcript and complete audio of her address to the U.S. Congress, 1943 Wellesley College Biography at the Wayback Machine Archive Index Time Magazine's Man and Wife of the Year, 1937 Madam Chang being honored by U.S. Senate Majority Leader Robert Dole left and Senator Paul Simon center at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., July 26, 1995 Madam Chiang Kai-shek, 1898-2003 Life in Pictures, Madam Chiang Kai-shek Voice of America Obituary CNN, Madam Chiang Kai-shek Dies Song Mailings Villa Madam Chiang, 105, Chinese Leader's Widow, Dies, The New York Times The Extraordinary Secret of Madam Chiang Kai-shek Madam Chiang Kai-shek, The Economist What a 71-year-old article by Madam Chiang Kai-shek tells us about China today, The Atlantic Madam Chiang Kai shek, 1898 2003 Time Madam Chang, IMDb Sung Mei Ling, Britannica. Com Madam Sung Mei Ling's life in her old age, Newspaper clippings about Sung Mei Ling in the 20th century press archives of the German National Library of Economics. ZBW.